This is the story of how an incompetent dam reconstruction in the early 1880s caused one of the worst disasters in U.S. history on May 31, 1889. Unqualified builders ignored critical safety features from the original 1840s South Fork Dam design when they rebuilt it to form Lake Connemaw. The lake was the center of the 1880s South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club Resort Complex in the Allegheny Mountains. The rebuilt dam failures sent 3.8 million gallons of water racing down a 450-foot elevation drop through the winding Little Connemaw River 14-mile path from the dam to Johnstown in a matter of hours. Experts have estimated that the flood wave moved at speeds up to 40 miles per hour, uprooting trees, buildings, railroad locomotives, and destroying several bridges. Photos from the time show the massive damage and the debris accumulation at the Stone Arch Railroad Bridge across the Connemaw River in Johnstown, just downstream of where the Little Connemaw and Stony Creek Rivers merge. In the 1850s, Johnstown was an active coal mining and iron making industrial city in the Allegheny Mountains of western Pennsylvania. It was also an important hub for the western division of the Pennsylvania Canal System, where the Allegheny Portage Railroad connected the eastern and western divisions of the Pennsylvania Canal System by carrying barges over the Allegheny Mountains. The Pennsylvania Canal System was a major competitor to the Erie Canal system in New York. This site plan shows how Johnstown looked in 1853. The Cambria Iron Works, the major employer in Johnstown, was located close to the confluence of the Little Connemaw and Stony Creek Rivers. The Pennsylvania Canal passed right through the Iron Works and crossed the Little Connemaw River. The canal pond in the lower left is part of the canal water system, which got water from the Little Connemaw and Stony Creek Rivers. The barge system worked well when the river flows were up. However, there were problems when the river flows decreased in summer months. This 1845 artist rendering shows the canal crossing the river in an aqueduct with the mule team pulling the barge. Taking another look at the site plan, we can see the route of the Pennsylvania Railroad through Johnstown. The railroad crosses the Connemaw River over the Stone Arch Bridge, where much of the flood debris was trapped and caught fire 36 years after this site plan was made. Looking at the Stone Arch Bridge today, it is hard to imagine how the small river in this photo could have caused so much death and damage in 1889. The western division of the Pennsylvania Canal System had a water supply problem in the summer months when the river flows dropped off and the canal level dropped so low that barges could not move along the canal. Pennsylvania started planning a western reservoir to augment canal flows in the dry summer periods in 1838. The South Fork Dam and Western Reservoir were completed in 1852, the same year that the Pennsylvania Railroad completed the first Philadelphia to Pittsburgh train trip. The original South Fork Dam had several design features that provided a high level of safety for the earthen dam. The dam had an impermeable core, five 24-inch discharge pipes to lower the dam level for maintenance and repairs, large riprap stones on the downstream face of the dam, and a dam height spillway width designed to prevent overtopping of the dam. Competition between the newer, faster railroad and the older, slower canal led to the eventual sale of the dam and reservoir to the Pennsylvania Railroad. In 1857, only five years after the dam was built, the Pennsylvania Railroad took possession of the dam and western reservoir lands. The railroad neglected the dam and reservoir, in 1862, a breach in the dam reduced the water level in the reservoir from 72 feet to 40 feet. The dam and reservoir stayed in this state of disrepair until 1875, when an Altoona congressman, John Kelly, bought them from the railroad. 
1879, Benjamin Ruff bought the dam and reservoir to build a mountain lake retreat for wealthy Pennsylvania industrialists. This photo shows the rebuilt South Fork Dam in Lake Conema. You can see where Benjamin Ruff filled in the 1862 breach in the original dam. The club also built a large hotel and several vacation cottages. Boating was a major activity on the lake. These photos from the 1880s show a canoeist by the fish grate and visitors viewing water flowing over the spillway. The club made several changes to the original South Fork Dam design that ultimately led to its failure in 1889. Club visitors arrived at the South Fork train depot from Pittsburgh and needed to make a short trip from the depot to the club. Ruff decided to add a carriageway across the top of the dam, providing visitors an impressive view of Lake Conema and the South Fork Valley. While the original specification called for a total of 150 feet of spillway, Ruff only provided an 85-foot spillway. In addition, he lowered the dam height by two feet, removed the five 24-inch drain pipes, and added a fish grate by the spillway. Did these changes cause the failure in the club's rebuilt dam? The American Society of Civil Engineers formed a committee of experienced engineers to investigate the dam failure. They published their report in 1891. The committee concluded that the South Fork Hunting and Fishing Club took out the drainage pipes in the dam, lowered the embankment about two feet, partially obstructed the spillway to prevent the escape of fish. They concluded, quote, these changes materially diminished the security of the dam by exposing the embankment to overflow and consequent destruction by floods of less magnitude than could have been borne with safety if the original construction of 1851 to 53 had been adhered to. They went on to say, but in our opinion, they cannot be deemed to be the cause of the disaster as we find that the embankment would have been overflowed and the breach formed if the changes had not been made. Are these conclusions valid? In 1988, Walter Frank reviewed the original dam design and specifications and noted that the original design called for a 150-foot spillway, not the 85-foot spillway provided by the club. Frank concluded that, quote, if the reconstruction of the South Fork Dam had been rebuilt to the original specifications and construction, the disaster of May 31, 1889 would never have occurred. Geologists at the University of Pittsburgh, Johnstown, conducted in-depth investigations into the rebuilt dam failure over a number of years. In their 2016 report on the investigations, they provided a detailed analysis of, of the two-day rainfall intensity. Their rainfall analysis showed that the two-day rainfall varied from five to six inches in some areas to over eight inches in the highest rainfall areas. The drainage areas above the rebuilt South Fork Dam got six to seven inches, while Johnstown got five to six inches. The geologist's hydrologic and hydraulic analysis showed that the design changes reduced the spillway and drainage system capacity by 50%. The capacity of the original spillway and drainage systems could have handled the May 30, 31, 1889 rainfall. The increased storage and double capacity of the original dam would have prevented overtopping long enough to protect the South Fork Dam. These geologists also raised a number of questions about the impartiality of the 1891 report. The 1891 conclusions were not consistent with information available to the committee. 
The 1891 report appears to have been biased in favor of the dam owner are two of the most critical findings. As a postscript, it's important to recognize that no damage claims were ever paid for this disaster. Neither the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club nor any members were found liable. Skilled, experienced people can, can sometimes make incompetent mistakes. Benjamin Ruff was a well-regarded builder and contractor. The ASCE South Fork Dam Investigation Committee had renowned engineers. As David McCullough has said, the lesson of the Johnstown flood is this. It's a great mistake, possibly even perilous, ever to assume that because people are in positions of responsibility, that they are therefore acting responsibly.